Hey, what's up, guys? This is Pizzik64 here, and I just got done watching Monday in the Bank. And this pay per view was probably the best pay per view of the year. Uh, probably a little bit better than WrestleMania. Uh, I'm not counting WrestleMania 30's um, match that supposedly happened that never happened. Undertaker and Brock Lesnar and that match never happened. Um, in fact, Undertaker's still 21 and 0. Last year, uh, Undertaker beat Vacant because Vacant doesn't exist according to WWE. So, yes, um, that match never existed. So, whatever Paul Heyman says never happened. I haven't seen Undertaker since 2013. We're gonna leave it at that. Anyways, uh, about this, uh, there really wasn't a single bad match. Uh, maybe Summer Rain, La actually Summer Rain Layla, that match was, oh god, ugh, ugh, they're both beautiful women, but, uh, just, just let them just, let's just stare at them and back to them and let Von Nago make out with them, not, not let them wrestle, please, never again, I mean, I like the storyline, I don't mind it, it's a good storyline, but just, ugh, ugh, Oh, I know Divas matches are primarily bad, but oh god, that was probably one of them. probably the worst match in the reality era, pay per view wise. Anyways, um, I'll go in order. Well, I'll try to go in order here. Uh, the first match uh, was the Usos versus Wyatt Family. This was probably the best tag team match in the entire reality era so far. Uh, one of the best matches in the entire reality era. Uh, yeah, this ma this was this was definitely the best tag team match. Um, this proved that the Wyatt family can go, that Luke Harper and Eric Rowan can go, and this also proved that the Usos retain. The Usos are legitimate champions. This point, this elevated both tag teams. This was a great match, one of the best tag teams I've seen in years. It was that damn good, and. I'm giving this a four, probably a four and one four stars. Amazing tag team match. One of the best. And you know what? This proved that the Wyatt family does not, well, they still need Bray Wyatt, but, you know, they don't have to use Bray Wyatt as much. And Bray Wyatt can start going on his own a little bit and not have to, uh, you know, get the Wyatt family on him all the time. This starts to prove that the Wyatt family can start going on their own. And maybe someday, maybe at night, I, I, I'd I say the Wyatt family can win at night champions. I think that would be the best time to give it to them. I don't think SummerSlam, uh, you could do SummerSlam, but you got to get the Usos another. Because they didn't win at WrestleMania, those tag team titles. They should have. I think the Usos could get a, a big-time victory at big-time pay-per-view. Maybe have them win at SummerSlam, then night of champions, have the Wyatt family win. I, that's how I would book it. But, like I said, this is a four and one four star. Great tag team match. Like I said, one of the best tag team matches I've seen in the PG era. The two, But definitely best in the reality era. Authority era, whatever it's called. Um, second match, I believe, was a Divas match. Like I said, I, I can't remember the exact order. So, I'm just going to just talk about each match that I know. This match uh, was actually really good for a Divas match. Uh, Paige can go in the ring. We all know that. Naomi can go in the ring, which shocked me. I, I knew that she could, but this was actually a pretty good match. The only thing that was weird, though, is during the middle of the match, Paige did this, like, one weird re thing. I can't even get my leg up that high. She, like, grabbed Naomi's leg and just pulled it up. And I'm just like, what are you doing? You, you stretching her? Or what, what are you trying to do? This, ugh, this didn't look... That just looked weird to me. This was an alright Divas match. Uh, Paige retained. Um, and Paige is my wife. Um, and her and I are going to get married someday. And Naomi and I are going to have some chocolate thunder someday, you know. Um, I'd like to put my blackness in her blackness and make the old, and make the biggest black hole in history. Um, but anyways, I think she's more attractive than Cameron. I, 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 I'm not into dark black girls. I'm usually more into light skin girls. When a dark black girl is more attractive, that's the one. That is the one for me. Um, so I'm going to give this 
Ah, two, three, four stars. Next match was the match of the night, in my opinion, the number one contenders match. I thought this was the better of the two. I thought the other one was kind of... I don't know why. The other one was good, but I couldn't get into it as much. This one, I... Ooh. Maybe because it was more high-flying spots. Maybe because a lot of the uh, other guys were bigger. This was a fantastic match. Another insane Kofi Kingston spot. Um, as usual. He goes... He's falling off the ladder. He lands on the top rope. And does like a flip and hits everyone. Everyone wanted Dolph Ziggler when I hate Dolph Ziggler. I just, I can't get into him. I'm sorry, you Dolph Ziggler fans. I'm just, I'm starting not to like him because I'm starting to feel bad for him because everyone wants, it, it's kind of like Zack Ryder a couple years ago. Everyone wanted Ryder to become a star and then boom, WWE didn't want that. But in this one, Dolph Ziggler is now that Zack Ryder role, in my opinion. I say this was, I'd say four and a half stars. I did, the ending killed it, though. Um, Kane coming out, and because Dean Ambrose was about to win, Dean Ambrose had like a broken arm or something. They wouldn't let him in. He comes back after Seth Rollins. It's about to win. And then all of a sudden, Kane comes out and just beats up. Dean Ambrose and let Seth Rollins win. Does a tombstone though. I like that. They need to bring Tombstone back because I haven't seen it since 2013 or two yeah, 2013 when he did this uh Undertaker did CM Punk. I haven't seen it. So apparently he did to Brock Lester, which Brock Lester doesn't uh in that match never existed. Um so that's why WrestleMania 30 uh, review by me was never happened because that match never existed. I can't I, I can't do a review of a match that never existed. Um, but anyways, um, Kane just it didn't like the finish. It made Seth Rollins look weak. You were to make this big time heel. But it, 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 some people might say it makes sense storyline wise to have the authority stick together, but. It just makes Kane look... Kane's not... I don't know. I just... No, what I would have done is if Kane's already in the other match, why not just have Kane just go on the ladder, grab the Money in the Bank briefcase, and then win both Money in the Banks? I would have been fine with that, honestly, because then that that still has... The, then the authority still has it. I know people will be like, that ruined Seth Rollins' character, but... I wouldn't mind it. I would not mind that at all. It'd be something different, something that's never happened before. Why not? There may be true, and, and then Kane will have both. You know, he could use the Intercontinental title, and you know, they can have all the titles. I wouldn't mind that, but that's for a different subject. I'll give this four and, four and a half stars. Best match of the night. And then, like I said, in the beginning of, like, the first hour, hour and a half of this show was amazing. It was fast-paced. You loved it. And then it just, after this, it kind of died down a little bit. Uh, I think the next match was Gold... Uh, I can't remember the order, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna review each match that I can think of. Gold Dust, Stardust versus Right Baxel. I'm not a fan of Stardust. I can't... Maybe... Maybe I'm just... I don't know. I like Cold Dust. I, he's an attitude era guy. Future Hall of Famer. And Ryback's still my boy. Even though his character's momentum just died. Thanks to seeing uh, CM Punk in the shield. Ugh. But anyways... This match was okay. Nothing to it, really. Uh, probably two and a half stars. It wasn't a bad match. Just actually, I'll give it three. You know, it was all right. There wasn't a problem with it. And then I think oh at, oh I forgot about Adam Rhodes and um that the that was the match after Paige. I was trying to think of the oh it was Adam Rhodes versus Paul Revere. Paul Revere came back after two hundred years of being dead and. 
tried to challenge Adam Rhodes, um, but the Bunny and Adam Rhodes won the match. This match was all right. It wasn't bad. Really short, so it was like maybe three minutes. So I'll give this like a two and two and a half star. It, it really wasn't that good, but it wasn't bad. Like I said, there wasn't a bad match until I'll review that one in a little bit, how bad that was. Next match was The Beast, my favorite wrestler right now, Rusev. He is my current favorite, him and Bo Dallas. Because Bo Dallas is my hero. Which, you know what, I'm going to get to the Bo Dallas part right after this. Even though it happened in the beginning, but I'll review that too. Rusev and Big E, power match. I, these are my favorite type of matches. Two 300-pound guys who beat in a crap each other. Most people like the flippity flips. I like big man matches because it makes more, it's more realistic. You know, these guys are just beating the shit out of each other. Rusev won, my favorite wrestler. Big E's in my top five as well. So, I it didn't really matter who won this match. This was a good match. I thought their payback match was a little bit better. But, this really is making Rusev a star. This is elevating both Big E. I like Big E's new, like, gospel church kind of gimmick he's having and Rusev's Umaga International just can't speak English just beat up and Lana will be my future wife as well next to Paige I'm going to marry both of them at once her act even though it's a fake accent but it's still sexy I don't care she can tell me to shut up all night long but uh yeah uh, I'll give this I'll give it a three one four star this is a good match Two big man matches. I love big man matches. I will always put a big man match a little bit higher up. And then we get to... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, Summer Rae and Layla are beautiful women. I would love to just have both of them come to my house and hang out and get drunk. Actually, even sober. I wouldn't mind. Oh my god, I can I can stare at him all night. And Fawn Uncle's a lucky son of a bitch to work with these two. But oh god, what's this match? Oh it almost made me cry how bad this was. Oh god. Oh dud. Zero. I can't I, I, no, I'm not even giving this match anything. This was just bad. I don't care. If you are a supporter of either one of these two, like I said, they're oh they're gorgeous. Oh my gosh, they look good. But oh, they can't wrestle. Just L. Oh, one of the worst divas. Probably the worst divas match of the re, the re reality era. Reality era. <laughs> and then we get to the main event. The WWE Championship, which we already know the finish, most predictable finish. John Cena, number 15, Ric Flair. Ric Flair, you know what? This should be a match between Ric Flair and John Cena for the WWE Championship. When John Cena hits 16, it should be John Cena and Ric Flair. The main event, WrestleMania 32. The battle for seven, or 18. Or 17. I was 17 time champion. The battle right there. John Cena wins. Cena wins. LOL. Once again, match was good though, but it wasn't as good as the first one. Uh, the crowd wasn't really into this one. The crowd was probably exhausted. I wanted my boy Del Rio to win it because he's like my second, third favorite wrestler. He's been, I've been a fan of his since 2011. I was, I'm still on his bandwagon. All my favorite wrestlers aren't doing anything right now. Except Rusev and Bo Dallas, which Bo Dallas, um, Daniel Bryan disrespected Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas gave him the hope that he needs to bully to come back into WWE. <laughs> Daniel Bryan should have shook his hand and said, I do bully and you will be, you are my hero. But no, no, just disrespect, just bury him. Why not? But this match was good. High spots. Like I said, I, I would have did the Kane role. I thought Brock Lesnar was going to come out and maybe confront uh, John Cena. Why not? 
You already have Paul Heyman out there. Room for Cesaro. Why not just have both of them? Why not just have Paul Heyman come out with Brock Lesnar? Have a stare down. And Triple H didn't get involved in this match, which was somewhat good. I thought there was going to be something. But you know what? Maybe you don't need it. You don't need it. But uh, overall, I'll give this pay-per-view an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, oh God, that Layla match probably would have gave this a 9, maybe 9.25 if that match was not so bad. Um, surprised Seth Rollins didn't come out. I, I'm surprised that Randy Orton and Kane didn't just beat the shit and Triple H, Randy Orton just didn't beat up John Cena and have Seth Rollins. But I can see why they didn't because of Brock Lesnar. I think they're going to do the Cena-Lesnar match. Personally, I would have, you know, if you did the Kane way, have Kane win both, Undertaker. Have under maybe Brock Lesnar comes after Kane, Undertaker comes back and says, "You ended my streak, and I will end your title reign." That's just me. All right, guys, uh, I'm the future of YWC. Thank you for listening. I'm going to be a star someday. Please help me. I'm Pizzik64. I'm out. Peace.